Hello and welcome, gamers and gamettes, to a very special gameplay series. I'm your host, B.R. Brainerd, and it's finally time. The press embargo on the Elder Scrolls Online has been lifted. I do have a press account, and ZeniMax has been sending out emails saying, go ahead, start posting your videos. So we're going to dive right in. This time around, I'm going to be playing the Nightblade. I have tried playing the Sorcerer first time around, then the Dragon Knight, but when I switched to the Nightblade, I just fell in love. They're fast-paced, they're frenetic, they've got a smaller margin for error, which I like personally. I'm also going to be playing as a Khajiit this time around. Comedy possibilities aside, they do happen to be very good for Nightblades. The racial abilities are powerful enough that, based on my experience, I think it is likely that best race and class combinations for a particular role like tank, DPS, or healer will emerge eventually, and that that will be sought after by hardcore raiders and the like. But at this point, I don't know what's ideal, although a lot of people have been saying that the Khajiit it was a very, very good melee Nightblade, and that the Bosmer or Wood Elves are very, very good playing as a ranged Nightblade. Keep in mind that there's a lot of diversity in terms of how you want to play the game. It's only when you start getting into, you know, hardcore endgame thinking that you end up getting directed one way or the other. If you're just playing single player, it's perfectly feasible to whip out a bow, use a healing staff, anything you want, at least at first. Alright, let's take a quick look at the Khajiit racial abilities. The first and only ability that you start out with as a Khajiit is this medium armor specialization, which means that your medium armor skill will go up 15% faster than other races. I think that this is pretty clever, and every race has a version of this, because what it means is that when you get to level 50 and everything's maxed out, you're not going to be any better at medium armor than anyone else, but as you're leveling up, you will get that little bit of an advantage. Now, those of you who have played the wonderful, wonderful game Morrowind might be excited to see the return of medium armor. I do just have to say that there is a little bit of a difference in how it works in the Elder Scrolls Online. Clothing and the like is considered light armor. Leather and so forth is considered medium armor. And plate mail is heavy, naturally. As you continue to gain additional skill points, other racial abilities will unlock. As you can see for the Khajiits, they get increased health regeneration in battle, an increased stealth radius, and eventually they get critical strike bonuses in melee. This is why people love them for melee night blades. Now, of course, you do have to consider faction. You cannot group with people that are not in your faction at all. You can be in a guild together, but if your friends are leveling up and you want to play with them, choose the faction that your friends are playing before you pick your race. That's the price. It means that sometimes you won't get to play the race that you originally wanted. But because of the mega server, the problem that would happen a lot of the time in other games, I can remember in World of Warcraft there would be some servers that had 80% of the server would be Horde. And if you picked Alliance on that server, you would be screwed. You'd be completely screwed. There'd be no economy. It'd be very difficult to find groups for instances and so on. Because of the mega server, that's not going to happen. In fact, there's been a website that tracks the population of each faction, and they're very, very close to one-third each. So you won't lack for people to group with, no matter what faction you pick, but work out with your friends in advance what faction you all want to play. All right, let's get back to character creation. Now, I've, for comedic effect, tried to make a pretty ugly-looking character. I've given him the, the biggest possible gut, a nice big butt, tiny little Bluto from Popeye the Sailor-like legs, tiny arms, at least the smallest that the engine will allow me to make. Now, you're seeing the smallest arms and the biggest possible gut and the smallest possible feet and so forth and the biggest catcher's mitt hands that I can manage. But it's very difficult with this engine to make a properly deformed character because of the lack of range. Now, some of you will like that because it won't break immersion with crazy looking characters. For me, it does mean that I'm missing a little bit of a comedic opportunity, but that's okay. As you can now see, you have as many options to customize your character's face as the entire rest of the body. Everything from eyebrows, cheekbones, facial hair, this typical RPG type of stuff. There are many different eye colors, some of which might seem a little bit unnatural. You can have beady, glowing red eyes in your Khajiit if you want, but we're going to go with pastel blue. And there we are. This is Tajik, the tubby Khajiit Nightblade, who's impossible not to see coming. Let's get started with the opening quest. Alright. In true Elder Scrolls tradition, we wake up in prison. 
This is the first thing you see when you roll up a new character, and we're instructed to search the cell. I'm going to switch into first person mode. Let's see what we can find. How do you feel? Can you move? Huh. That sounded like Michael Gambon. What's he doing in hell? Well, I guess he knows how to make an entrance shit. Even looks like Michael Gambon. Slowly now. You've been through an ordeal. Take a few moments to collect yourself. Some of you might be recognizing the voice of Albus Dumbledore from the movies. Like you, I'm a prisoner in this place. Yet so much more. I am the past and the future, both. I am despair and hope. The tapestry we weave is a complex one. You cannot hope to see its pattern in its entirety. Not yet. Who would have thought that the Christian fundamentalists turned out to be right and gay wizards really do go to hell? You must rescue me, and I, in turn, must rescue you. You must escape from this cell, take up arms, and protect yourself. Then find Lyrus Titan. Alright, do you want to help open my- oh. I must go, my people are watching Project Runway. Yeah. We are escaping. Let me open your door. Well, isn't that convenient? That's it. Quickly. You must escape before the guards return. Well, I've managed to escape from my cell, but unfortunately I am... Quickly. Follow Still in freaking hell. One wonders what the point of having jail cells in hell is. Was I... There are weapons in the forge beyond these cells. Arm yourself. Okay. Stabbing things I can get behind. But seriously, why was I in jail? Was I, like, extra naughty? Oh, hello. Yeah, I know some real estate agents that could sell the hell out of this place. Good insulation, natural springs to be converted into a jacuzzi. The last home you'll ever have to buy. something to defend yourself from the racks. Don't be greedy. We have a lot of prisoners to arm. Well, here we have an example of every weapon type in the game. Let's take a look. Sword and board, two-handed mace. I think this is, yes, this is a healing staff. So you want to heal people, you can use it on players. Two-handed mace. I think this is a destruction staff. Yeah, frost staff. Bows. And twin axes. Now, if I wanted to, I could start out with any of these, but I'm going to go the traditional route and equip a couple of twin axes into my inventory. It is pretty cool that you get this much freedom this early. But let's check out our inventory. Okay. So we just need to drag these weapons onto our paper doll over at the left. Here we go. And here we have the basics of combat. Left click for a basic attack, right click to block, hold left click for a power attack. As far as I know, there aren't different directional power attacks like there were in Skyrim, but there is an added interruptibility if you press both mouse buttons. And you can block if you're dual wielding, which is pretty cool. Okay. Let's see if we can get these axes out and see what we look like. Just left click to draw them. Alright, it looks like we're going to be able to do some damage with these things. Let's proceed on to the next area. Alright, let's see here. Ooh, you even have a name. Don't stop now. Keep moving. More guards are on the way. Well, I guess you're not that important after all. I find myself wondering if all the NPCs going through here have the ability to load into new areas, but no, I don't think they do. Even enemies. An enemy approaches. Strike it down. Strike it down with all of your hate and your journey towards the dark side. Ooh, hey, this is fun. Always oh, winding up. <laughs> hey, look, his jaw is moving. Hey, could you could you put my skull back on my shoulders, God? This is this is so embarrassing. Oh, please. Oh, hey, come back. You can't just leave me here. Oh, shit. I guess I should consider myself lucky that I managed to kill him, despite the fact that he was already in hell. I guess he must have gone to Supermax Hell. You gotta be like the Grey Fox to escape from there. Speaking of which, what's the plan here? Like, I'm all for sticking it to the man, especially when the man is Beelzebub, but I'd like to know what I'm supposed to do. Another enemy blocks the path ahead. Dispatch it quickly. Let's try our luck with Sneak this time. No, too close. Okay, so he's backing up. He's gonna try and kite. There's a red cone on the floor right now, and so he misses us because we got it out of the way. What, you've never seen what leveling up looks like from the outside? Shit, you gotta try it, lady. Kill a few goblins, collect a few bear asses, and before you know it, out of the blue, you know how to call down meteors from space. It's cool. 
So as you can probably tell from the text going by, there is a relationship between leveling up and leveling up your secondary skills, but it's not one-to-one. -one. Let's see here. Health increases your survivability. Magicka, we do actually use Magicka for our abilities, so we'll need some. But stamina is where the money is for this class, because as you can see, it increases your weapon damage. And being able to sprint around a lot more is a little bit nice too, so I think for level 2, we're going to be spending it on stamina. And this is the way which, unfortunately, respecking is still a thing in the Elder Scrolls Online. For example, the example that I gave in the previous video, say your tank dies and you want to step in for him, you can switch weapons in combat, it turns out. Thank you for correcting me on that. But you'll probably have all your points dumped into stamina, not into health, and you won't have any heavy armor equipped, so you're not going to be very effective at it without a respec and a re-equip outside the fight. Okay, let's check out our character skills. You can read this pop-up if you've never played a computer game before. I think I'm going to spend my first point to buy this Assassin's Blade ability. It's an execute ability, does additional damage to things that are dying, Shadow Cloak is nice to have as well, invisibility right in the middle of combat. Assassin's Blade is going to be what we're going to go with for now. Personally, I think it would be nice if we had enough skill points to go around to put points into many other weapon skills, but we'll see how many we have. Alright, that's all for this episode, folks. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to The Elder Scrolls Online. There will be more videos in this series, but I'm unsure at this point when the next release will be. I will do everything in my power to get out another Elder Scrolls video as soon as possible, but because I'm not partnered with anyone big, I am allowed to do Elder Scrolls videos like these, but I'm not allowed to monetize them until April. It's a weird policy, so I'll have to think about what I'm going to do in the meantime. But there will be more, so thanks for watching. I've been your host, B.R. Brainerd, and I'll catch you next time.